Day, starting with a special screening coming up this month at the Ottawa International Animation Festival. Based on the acclaimed graphic novels by Luke Pearson, the story of Hilda, a fearless blue-haired girl who travels from her home in a vast magical wilderness full of elves and giants. It's now a new Netflix series brought to life in stunning animation by the Ottawa-based company Mercury Filmworks. To learn more about this local success story, joining me in studio is director Andy Coyle. Welcome to our Ottawa. Thanks for having me, thank you. Andy, such an exciting time for you. Uh, Hilda is on Netflix. Totally exciting. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We've been really waiting for this for, for quite a while. Um, it's been four years. Been yeah, it's been it. a long time. We, we, since we started developing the show and adapting it from uh, the comic books that it's based on by, uh, by Luke Pearson, which uh, if you haven't read those books, I'd, I'd suggest checking them out. They're, they're super fun. They're, they're great, fantastical adventures and uh, strange and uh, quirky. I would say. T tell us a bit about Hilda, uh, because she's a girl, of course, a blue-haired girl. Yeah. Uh, running to Trollberg is the, yeah. is, the, is, the, is the town that she's kind of running through. Can you tell us a little bit more about the, the, the premise of the story? Yeah, I mean, the basic premise of the show, is, it sort of focuses on this girl, uh, Hilda, who has these, these fantastical adventures in this sort of like Scandinavian-inspired uh, world where um, she sort of grew up uh, in sort of a remote uh, part of this world and uh, is transplanted to the big bustling city of Trollberg where um, she assumes it's going to be quite dull and, and tedious but uh, it turns out it's actually incredibly exciting and there's all kinds of things there that uh, she uh, didn't expect to find. Hilda, we have to move to Trollberg. Please, Mum, we've been here since I was born. It's literally the best place ever. And how would you describe her as a character? It's difficult to really pin her down to something that's um, sort of like a one trait kind of idea because she's intentionally sort of crafted as a, a genuine kid. So she's uh, around 10 years old and she has you know, a lot of facets to her personality. She's clearly like a little wild and a little untamed, you know, because she's been growing up sort of in this remote part, away from a lot of human contact. She's been mostly uh, accompanied by her, her best friend and companion, Twig, who's a little uh, a deer fox, which is a, a cool little fuzzy, cute creature, um, and, um, and her mother, who she lives with. So she has, um, I think, definitely some unconventional personality quirks, um, but she's very complex and and so the the kinds of stories we're telling in this series are uh they can involve all kinds of things like things about growing up and things about sort of learning who you are um and your place in the world andy you, you were alluding to the fact that that hilda is 10 years old uh there's someone in your household who's also 10 years old y your daughter what, what does your daughter think of the character of hilda my daughter Erin is, uh, she loved the comic books and she devoured all of them uh, really quickly and then promptly uh, started spreading them around to her friends and, um, and now she's, she's incredibly excited to uh, have the show come out, particularly because she has some artwork. She's in it. Yes, she actually <laughs> makes a cameo it. appearance in the show yeah. and she uh, provides the artwork for Hilda who is a bit of an artist herself. Um, so when in production, we need to find sort of like a genuine quality to the, to the art that this, this kid character was producing. I had this great resource in my daughter who, <laughs> who loves to draw. Audience. And, exactly. So yeah. it, it really, um, she's super looking forward to that. And that's going to be really fun for her to tell her friends and stuff. All that stuff. And, no, I know that you had been a fan of the Luke Pearson series uh, prior to this project coming to you. T tell us a little bit about how this landed in your lap. How the entire thing landed? Well, it, the, uh, the comic books were optioned by, by Silvergate Media. And uh, so as they came to us uh, at Mercury Filmworks with sort of this, this proposition to say, like, we've got these great books and we'd like to make an animated series out of it. What do you guys think about adapting this thing? And how would you go about that? And so it was sort of an immediate sort of like, I know exactly what this needs to be. Well, how do you approach it? Because it's a huge undertaking. Like, so how do you even start? Well, I think we started with sort of the core of the show, which was the, the character. And then we sort of, um, sort of adapted the setting 
uh, uh, from the books and found through those kinds of ideas that there's sort of a tone to these um, to these books and that it's it's different from what you would expect most cartoons to be where a lot of cartoons are very sort of and when you think of a cartoon it's comedy or it's slapstick uh, you think Bugs Bunny or you think you know and I think um, when we went into this we sort of very early on figured that this was much more akin to um, something like the never-ending story or, or a Steven Spielberg movie um, that uh, instead of something that was so deeply rooted in in trying to be funny all the time we wanted to do an adventure show for kids you know something that had stakes and it was thrilling and it was um, you know different kinds of appeal that you don't generally find in TV all that much particularly uh, kids animation this, this seems to be you, you seem to be exactly where you're supposed to be you, you've been training for this really all your life I know you, you yeah. were born you were <laughs> born in Toronto yeah uh, grew up in Beldoon yeah in New Brunswick pop population 1500 yeah and what were the stories that were meaningful for you when you were growing up what, what were the stories that really kind of helped to form and, and shape you I was really interested in horror movies a lot as, as a child um, but there's a lot of I think things that that influenced me that um, just through through osmosis, through being exposed to them, like even simple things like Mr. Dress Up and, uh, and Sesame Street, um, and moving on from there into sort of my obsession with Star Trek The Next Generation, and, you know, like all these sort of little pieces of, of being exposed to these elements sort of combine into um, what I hope is a interesting way of telling stories. I guess we'll see. You are living really in a community of, of, of animators, of storytellers here in Ottawa. Ottawa has really become a center, uh, or one of the centers for the animation industry. How, for those people who maybe aren't familiar with the role that Ottawa has come to play in the industry, how, how would you describe Ottawa's place? Well, there's a lot going on here. I think, uh, particularly in terms of uh, television animation, we've got this this great industry that's been developing for the last you know, for for decades. And um, I feel that at this point, uh, the industry has really matured so that we're starting to branch out and to, and to really try some, some different and unique things. And um, the, the Ottawa Animation Festival is actually a great showcase of like that kind of work. Um, it, it's got sort of like a, an independent bent to it. And it's the biggest uh, animation festival in North America, actually. So that's uh, incredibly convenient for all of the animation studios and artists who sort of reside in the city who can kind of take part in this with uh, all these people, 30,000 come from all over the world to sort of um, experience these screenings and, the, and share all this, this cool stuff that people have been making all year. Andy, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, about your, your relationship with, with the Ottawa-based uh, studio. Mercury Filmworks. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of your association with Mercury? Yeah, I've been uh, I've been at Mercury Filmworks uh, for about ten years now, here in Ottawa, where we uh, we've worked on all kinds of, of shows that you may have seen in the past. We we do a lot of Atomic Puppet. Atomic Puppet. We, that was one of our own shows that we sort of developed in house, um, and uh, we do a lot of work for Disney. Um, and, and a lot of clients around the world that uh, we, we can create sort of world-class animation here in Ottawa. How do you explain the success that Mercury's enjoyed over this last decade? Well, it's really, it boils down to the people who work at the studio. I think we have, we have a team of artists who are, who are dedicated to really doing their best and trying to make everything we touch as good as it can possibly be within the boundaries of what we have to work with. And I, I feel like we haven't even really reached our full potential yet. We're still on the incline. We're still figuring out new ways of doing things and new innovations to try and help our pipeline achieve some, some cool different ideas and be able to open up the possibilities for storytelling that, uh, you know, up until the, the advent of, of this new technologies that we use, we're sort of off limits, uh, particularly in television. Our slogan is obviously where imagination takes flight, and I think that's that's actually incredibly apt in the, in the sense that it is where we all strive to create a place where 
if you want to imagine something, it can be created. What does it mean for, for, for your, your project, this project you've been, you've been working on for, for so long, Hilda, to, to have a screening at the Ottawa International Animation Festival in your adopted hometown of Ottawa? It's great. That's, that's the best part, is being able to hold this, uh, this screening and discussion panel that we're going to have afterwards um, here in Ottawa, where the artists who really worked really, really hard on making this show, it took a lot of, of elbow grease to put something like this together, something that was that was different from the way you normally execute television shows. Um, and for them to be able to tell their friends and their family and people who can come and just experience this. And then we can talk about it afterwards and we can sort of sit down and, and hopefully uh, really get in depth into sort of the, the process of making something like this in Ottawa with people all around enjoying the city and, uh, and having lots of fun. What do you want audiences to take away from the experience of, of, of watching the series? Well, I hope that it, it, in some ways, gets them thinking about um, just bigger ideas in their own life. I think every episode we try to sort of structure around not just a plot, but, but a theme as well. So a, sort of a, a conceptual idea, sort of either that, you know, uh, things change in your life and, and you can't stop it, but it's okay and you can learn to sort of embrace it. Uh, is sort of a big idea for kids to sort of wrap their minds around or the idea of of fear and and bravery and what it means to be afraid um, and whether that's a good thing or a bad thing or uh, the idea of even chaos versus order and and that a balance of the two are are probably the most beneficial way to sort of exist and these are these are big ideas but they're sort of boiled down to to simple adventures that kids can sort of start to think about these things. And even if they're not like intellectually conceptualizing these things, I think they can feel that it feels true and it feels like there's things to think about in these adventures. Andy Coyle, it's, it's great of you to join us. Best of luck with this project and uh, you know, Ottawa is cheering for you. Thanks cool. so much for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Thank you. A reminder, there will be a special screening of Hilda on September 29th at 3 p.m. at the Ottawa Art Gallery as part of the Ottawa International.